Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Rabia Paveen from Jamia Hamdard University, New Delhi. Today we will discuss about anti-aging preparations under the paper P11 that is cosmetics. In this we will discuss types of aging, then what are the reasons of aging, then ideal properties for anti-aging preparations, then types of anti-aging preparations and which type of excipients used for preparation of anti-aging formulations, then evaluations of anti-aging formulations and lastly clinical test of anti-aging preparations. Now we will start with introduction that includes structural changes upon aging. Skin aging is a complex natural process as a result of combination of intrinsic or endogenous that includes genetics hormonal misbalance, cellular metabolism and metabolic process and second type is extrinsic or exogenous that includes exposure to pollutants, ionizing radiations, UV rays, chemicals and toxins. All these factors alone or together lead to structural and physiological changes and progressive alterations in each layer of skin. These alterations results in change in texture and surface of the skin, especially sun exposed skin areas. Now you can see the difference between the two faces. First half of the face is normal skin and the second half of the face is aging. In second half you can see wrinkles, dullness, sagging on the skin that is upon aging. Now we will discuss about these layers of skin. Skin consists of three layers, the outer epidermis, middle dermis and inner subcutaneous layer. The dermis consists of elastin fiber that maintains the skin structure by folding or stretching back the muscles when these undergo various stress conditions like facial expressions and all. Collagen is also present in dermis layer which is responsible for prevention of wrinkle formation. During aging, skin will start losing elastin and breakdown of collagen. This results in thinning of the skin and prevents entry of moisture into the layers of skin which leads to dry skin. In subcutaneous layer, fat is present which makes the skin plumpy in appearance but upon aging that begins to disappear. All these together will lead to development of wrinkles or fine lines which is due to structural changes in lower dermal layers of the skin. Now you can see on the screen the changes occurs upon aging in different layers of skin. First in epidermis you can see the changes upon aging that is epidermal dermal junction flattens and there is reduction in enzymatically active melanocytes number of Langerhans cells decreases, pores increases and capacity for re-epithelization diminishes. Now in the dermis layer you can see decrease in the collagen synthesis, there is reduction in thickness and sweat glands, vascularity and cellularity decreases and there is degeneration in Pacinian and Misner's corpuscles. Now in case of hypodermis layer. There is reduction in elastin fibers and number of blood vessels are also decreases and the number of nerve ending decreases. The fat volume also decreases in hypodermis layer. Now in appendages you can see nail plates become abnormal. There is reduction in number of sweat glands and production of serum is also reduces. The hair pigment lost and hair becomes thin. Now, the next heading is types of aging. There are two types of aging depending upon the responsible factors whether it is intrinsic or extrinsic. If the factor is intrinsic then the aging is known as endogenous or internal aging and if the factors are exogenous or extrinsic then the aging is called as external aging and the clinical features or the changes occur in the skin layers you can see on the screen. The next heading is ideal properties which are required for the preparation of anti-aging formulations. The anti-aging formulations should be elegant in appearance, 
smooth in texture and non hydrating they should be non staining non greasy and non hygroscopic they should be non toxic non irritating and should be miscible with skin secretions they should not alter the skin functioning they should be ease in application with efficient drug release they should be washable with water they should have good permeability properties and they should release the anti aging drug component deep into the skin now come to the next heading that is types of anti aging preparations anti aging preparations are used for removal of wrinkles and aging effects on the human skin anti aging preparations helps to decrease wrinkles and puffiness of the skin by reducing the fine lines and increase the moisture of the skin this class of preparation includes conventional type of formulations like lotions creams ointments gels serum powder soaps foams etc and novel formulations which include liposomes micelles microemulsions microspheres liposomes neosomes etc first we will discuss conventional type of anti aging formulations in this first is cream creams are comprising of oil in water emulsions or aqueous micro crystalline suspensions of long chain fatty alcohols or acids that are water washable they should be cosmetically and aesthetically acceptable anti aging creams are intended for topical application on the skin for protective and therapeutic purpose especially for reduction in fine lines or wrinkles and keep skin dehydrating the second type of conventional type of formulation is lotion these are fluid somewhat viscid emulsion type dosage forms for topical application to the skin they have many properties similar to creams lotions can be either oil in water emulsions or suspensions containing anti aging drug components dispersed in the liquid phase the third type of conventional formulation includes gel single phase gel is transparent and mostly used as cosmetic preparations due to its aesthetic appearance anti aging gel contains therapeutic macro molecules of anti wrinkle property uniformly distributed throughout a liquid so that no apparent boundaries exist between the liquid and the dispersed macro molecules next type of conventional anti aging preparation is ointment ointments are semi solid preparations intended for topical applications on skin or mucous membranes they contain less than 20% water and volatile component and more than 50% of hydrocarbons waxes or polyols as the ointment base or vehicle anti aging ointments are used as emollients with therapeutic action on aging the next type is foams these are emulsified systems packed in pressurized bottles or special dispensing devices that consist of gas bubbles dispersed in a liquid continuous phase and when dispensed has a fluffy semi solid consistency for application to the skin for protective or therapeutic purpose now the next type type of anti aging formulations are novel formulations that includes liposomes these are spherical micron or sub microscopic vesicles containing anti aging ingredient with particle size between 25 to 5000 nanometer they are composed of amphiphilic molecules they have ability to coat the active anti aging component and deliver it deeply into the cells it is quickly absorbed from the skin and permeate into the deep layers of skin it delays the beginning sign of aging and also delays the appearance of fine lines or the wrinkles liposomes encapsulate water soluble and water insoluble ingredients within a product next type of novel anti aging formulation is neosome due to drawbacks of liposomes like high cost unstable nature variable purity of natural phospholipids neosomes were proposed these are non ionic surfactant vesicular delivery system having a bilayer structure formed by self assembly of hydrated surfactant monomers neosomes have advantages over liposomes like higher stability low production cost and ease in availability of surfactants with different structures skin penetration enhancer biodegradable modified drug release and non toxic neosomes can carry hydrophilic as well as hydrophobic anti aging drugs like in case of liposomes 
Now next is microemulsions that also comes under novel anti-aging formulations. It is a three phase system of water, oil and surfactant and co-surfactant mixture. It is a transparent isotropic and thermodynamically stable liquid formulation having droplet size 0.1 to 1 micron. It penetrates through the skin very quickly and thoroughly. Next type is nano emulsion. It consists of very fine oil in water dispersions with droplet diameter less than 100 nanometers. They are in a metastable form and very fragile systems by nature when compared with micro emulsions. Nano emulsions are easily accepted in skin care products because of their rapid penetration, merging textures and hydrating power. The next type is nanoparticulate systems, nanospheres that is matrix type or the nano capsules that is reservoir type can be defined as sub-micron colloidal systems with a mean particle size of 0.003 to 1 micron. The active component in nanoparticulate system can be incorporated in four different patterns for dissolved in nanosphere matrix or dissolved in liquid phase of nanocapsule, adsorbed at nanosphere surface or adsorbed at nanocapsule surface. Micro particulate systems are used in cosmetics to prevent incompatibility problems between excipients or anti-aging drug, decrease disagreeable odor of actives and protection of drug from degradation. The next type of novel anti-aging formulation is microspheres. These are spherical micro particles of 1 to 1000 microns. They are widely used in cosmetics due to advantages of excellent lubricity, soft and smooth feel, reduce fine wrinkles or lines, effective exfoliation and ability to hold colorants and active ingredients. Now you can see on the screen there is a list of conventional as well as novel anti-aging formulations which are available in the market. First you can see the novel formulations which are available in the market as anti-aging. First is liposomes, neosomes, then microemulsions, nanoemulsions. The conventional type of formulations which are available as anti-aging are mask, cream, serum, lotion and oil. Now come to the heading that is excipients which are used for preparation of anti-aging preparation. Anti-aging creams are widely used moisturizer based skin care products with a claim of making the skin look younger by decreasing, masking or preventing characteristic features of skin aging including sagging, wrinkles, dullness, dryness and pigmentation and also economic, easy and fast production. Anti-aging creams contain moisturizing ingredients and specific anti-aging ingredients alone or in combinations with other excipients or additives. Now come to the anti-aging ingredients. In this we will discuss one by one. First is retinol. Retinol is also known as retinyl palmitate. It is incorporated in many skin products to improve photo aging. All trans retinol is a precursor of cutaneous retinoic acid which is useful in treating skin conditions like photo aging etc. for which it is active. Retinol penetrates into the skin and oxidizes to retinal dehyde and then to retinoic acid which results in retinoic acid like effects. It absorbs ultraviolet light in shorter wavelengths like 325 nanometer then retinal dehyde and retinoic acid absorbing UV light at 385 nanometer and 345 nanometer. Retinol is less irritant than the other two retinoids therefore topical retinol could be act as a filter for the most biologically active UV range that is 290 to 320 nanometer of sunlight and it delivers slightly less amount of retinoic acid for a longer period of time. Retinyl esters also have the same UV spectrum as retinol and has the potential to deliver retinoic acid like effects to human skin with improved tolerability than other topical retinoids. Sunscreen products and anti-aging preparations contain retinol or other retinoids to prevent against UV radiations. The next type of anti-aging ingredient is epidermal growth factor or EGF. It stimulates collagen production in the skin to increase elasticity. It stimulates hyaluronic acid biosynthesis. 
It also stimulates fibroblast production, which in turn promotes the synthesis of collagen and elastin. These two can improve the cell division and growth of epidermis by controlling producing time of the cell factors, thereby increasing the elasticity of the skin. It has the potential to reduce wrinkle and micro groove by acting on the skin cells. It improves skin conditions, nourishes the skin by making more energetic, lively and gives younger look. It acts as smoothening, lightening, anti-scar or anti-wrinkle agent. The next type of anti-aging ingredient is alpha hydroxy acids or the beta hydroxy acids. Hydroxy acids play an important role in skin care and dermatological therapy. There are two types of hydroxy acids that is alpha and beta type. Alpha hydroxy acids are naturally occurring water soluble carboxylic acids obtained from many foods which includes glycolic acid from sugar, malic acid from apples, citric acid from citrus fruits and lactic acid from milk. The most widely used alpha hydroxy acids are glycolic acids and lactic acids. They act on epidermal as well as adermal levels. On topical application, they exfoliate the epidermal cells in stratum corneum by interfering with ionic bonding between the cells which results in slowing of dullness, roughness of skin and promotes cellular renewal. They have the potential to promote smoother, softer skin, faded wrinkles, decreased blemishes and lightened age spots. They also improve the stratum corneum barrier function, increase the proliferation and thickness of epidermal layer and restore moisture and plumpness due to an increase in hyaluronic acid synthesis. Alpha hydroxy acids can travel deeper into the dermal layer and effectively reverse the symptoms of photo aging. They were found to increase the acid mucopolysaccharides production that lead to improved quality of elastic fibers, increased collagen density and increased dermal thickness. They also promote the gene expression of hyaluronic acid and collagen in the dermis. All these together result in a significant reduction in wrinkles, restoration of skin hydration and increase in skin elasticity and tone. Now come to the beta type of hydroxyl acids. It includes salicylic acid which are similar to alpha hydroxyl acids but are lipid soluble in nature. Due to lipophilic nature, they penetrate deep into the skin through sebaceous follicles making it useful for oily skin patients. These are less irritating to the skin when compared with alpha hydroxy acid. This might be because of anti-inflammatory activity of salicylic acid which may reduce irritation. Beta hydroxy acids are found in skin products at a concentration of 1 to 2 percent and at a pH between 3 to 4. The next type of anti-aging ingredient is coenzyme Q10. It acts as antioxidant by neutralizing the free radical ions which are responsible for cell damage and cause photoaging. It supports energy levels and is used as an energy booster. When the energy level and concentration of antioxidants are depleted, the process of aging takes place. It is used to combat aging, especially in the skin and also makes a real difference and has scientifically been proven to enhance the appearance of the skin because it not only inhibits the cellular deterioration but also repairs it as it is already present in the skin as a part of body's cellular structure. It will not cause any toxic or harmful effect on the skin when applied topically. It protects, energizes, stimulates and nourishes the skin which in turn makes the skin look younger. The next ingredient is argireline. It is also known as acetyl hexapeptide 3. It is made up of peptides that is chains of amino acid which can affect how cells in the body work. On topical application of this onto the skin, it absorbs into the layers of skin and the chemical composition causes contraction of facial muscles. This results in reduction in the appearance of wrinkles and also it will smooth out fine lines that appear with internal or external aging. Argireline is much effective in the form of serum than in the form of cream and shows about 30% reduction in wrinkles. The next type of anti-aging ingredient is vitamin E. It is also known as tocopherol. Naturally, it contains eight chemical forms of fat-soluble components. Because of fat solubility of vitamin E, it becomes antioxidant against free radical damage to cell membranes composed of lipids. It anchors itself in the membrane and traps free radicals entry into the cell. Because of its limited capacity for containing entrapped radicals, it transfers them to vitamin C, which neutralizes the free radicals. This helps in restoring vitamin E to full scavenging potential. 
The combination of both vitamin E and C provide better antioxidant production against free radicals than single vitamin. Vitamin E is an excellent moisturizing agent that will help in keeping the skin hydrated by locking in moisture. It will increase the skin's elasticity. It could be used for all skin types but especially beneficial for dry skin. On regular application of vitamin E makes skin softer, tight, firm and younger look with reduced fine lines and wrinkles. It is helpful in reducing both type of aging and age related conditions. Concentration of vitamin E declines upon aging like other antioxidant defenses break down. The next type of anti-aging ingredient is vitamin C. It known as ascorbic acid. It is most effective and widely used ingredients in wrinkle free preparations. It acts as an antioxidant and helps in healing process of skin. It has a potential for boosting the skin's natural protection against free radical damage. The mechanism is same as vitamin E simply by neutralizing the free radicals thereby protecting the tissues and makes the skin smooth, wrinkle free and firm. It helps to promote replenishment of other antioxidants especially vitamin E. Vitamin C stimulates the production of collagen in the skin, maintains the effectiveness of existing collagen. It also acts as a natural bleaching agent which can help in improving the appearance of age spots and skin discoloration due to other reasons. It can help to reduce redness and swelling after trauma to the skin like sunburns. Now come to the next excipients or the ingredients which are used in preparation of anti-aging formulations that is moisturizers. Moisturizing agents treat dry skin and protect sensitive skin. They improve skin texture and tone and mask the imperfections of the skin. Moisturizing agents act through three different mechanisms. First is by forming a thin layer over the surface of skin to prevent loss of moisture, attract water vapor from air to moisturizes the skin and thirdly by restoring natural moisturizing components on the skin like amino lipids. Depending on mode of action, topical moisturizing agents are categorized as occlusive agents, humectants, emollients and rejuvenators. The agents which make a hydrophobic layer over the skin acts as a physical barrier and prevents loss of water are known as occlusives. Sometimes they may be uncomfortable on skin and therefore they may be combined with an emollient. Occlusives are most commonly used moisturizers in cosmetic formulations. The examples of occlusives are petrolatum, waxes, oils and silicones. The agents which attract water from the environment and increase the water concentration by absorption from dermis to epidermis to moisturize the surface of the skin are known as humectants. They may feel sticky, so will be combined with other excipients. The examples of humectants include glycerine, hydroxy acids, propylene glycol and urea. Rejuvenators is another class of moisturizing agent which are intended to replenish essential proteins like collagen, keratin and elastin in the skin. Because of larger size of molecules, these may not be able to replenish proteins in the lower layers. They might have a similar role as emollients and improve the skin appearance by forming a layer that aesthetically smooths the skin and stretches out and fills in fine lines. The example is natural oils. Those makes an occlusive barrier and smooth out the flaky skin cells to make skin smoother and softer are known as emollients. They improve the skin appearance and texture by filling the crevices between corneocytes. This results in increased smoothness and softness of the skin and improves overall appearance of the skin. The examples include fatty acids and esters and also natural oils. The emollients are further classified as hydrophilic emollients that includes water soluble ingredients used for water phase like glycerine, sorbitol and propylene glycol. The next type is lipophilic emollients that includes water insoluble components and make up the bulk of the available varieties of emollients. The non-polar lipophilic examples are petroleum derivatives like mineral oil, isoparaffin and isohexadecane. The polar lipophilic examples are natural oils like jojoba oil, olive oil and coconut oil. This includes esters like octyl palmitate, isopropyl stearate and isopropyl palmitate. 
and alcohols like octyl dodecanol. Silicon fluid emollients provide incredible levels of slickness and feel light. The examples are cyclomethicone and dimethicone. The next ingredients which are used for the preparation of anti-aging preparations are perfumes. Mostly cosmetic preparations have a pleasant smell. The selection of a fragrance is a very important tricky business and every company would like to have a distinctive odorific quality of his product for easy identification and differentiation from same products of other companies. While selecting the single or blend of perfumes, compatibility of perfume should be kept in mind so that it should be compatible with other excipients. Generally essential oils from plants are used as perfumes. The examples of flower fragrances are rose, jasmine, lily, lavender, gardenia, etc. The examples of woody perfumes are sandalwood, cedarwood, etc. The next type of ingredient used in anti-aging preparations are surfactants or the surface active agents. They are used to lower one or more boundary tensions between two phases of the system and makes the system thermodynamically stable. It is used for emulsification, foaming, wetting, solubilization and detergency properties. A surface active agent has two components, a non-polar hydrophobic component component which is typically insoluble in water. It is linear or branched alkyl and alkyl phenyl long chain of hydrocarbons. Second is a polar hydrophilic component. The surfactant classification is based on type of polar hydrophilic group. First type is non-ionic. It contains no charge. Examples include polyalkoxylate, glucose, sucrose, amine oxide. Second type is anionic. It contains negative charge. Examples sulfate sulfonate, carboxylate and phosphate. Third type is cationic. They contains positive charge, example alkyl ammonium salts. And the fourth type is zitter ionic. It contains both anionic and cationic groups. The other classification of surfactants is based on the functions of surfactants like cleansing surfactants, foaming surfactants, emulsifiers, solubilizing agents, conditioning agents and the surfactants for special effects. The next type of excipient is preservatives, preservatives, antimicrobials, antioxidants, all these are added to the cosmetic preparations to stabilize the formulation by protecting against degradation during shelf life or on use. There are different classes of preservatives based on their chemical nature like organic acids, examples benzoic acid, sorbic acid, etc. Next is esters of para hydroxy benzoic acids, examples are propyl ester or methyl esters, then chloroform, chlorocrisol, phenoxyethanol, quaternary ammonium compounds like cetrimide and benzalkonium, then organic mercurial compounds like phenyl mercuric nitrate, then antioxidants, these are used to protect the formulations against oxidation and the examples include methyl gallate, tocopherol, citric acid, ethanolamine, sodium sulfite, etc. The next type of excipients in anti-aging preparations are colors. Colorant is used to give appealing appearance and for identification purpose. There are four classes of colorants which are used in topical anti-aging preparations. The first First is organic dyes and their lakes, example amaranth red, tartrazine, etc. Second is inorganic or mineral colors like red iron oxide, titanium dioxide, etc. Third is natural colors from plants or animal origin like musk, saffron, turmeric, anthocyanins, chlorophyllin, etc. Then dyes, these are synthetic chemical compounds consist of 80 to 93 percent of pure colorant material which exhibit their coloring action or tinctorial strength when solubilized in a particular solvent. Then on the screen you can see the formula of anti-aging cream. This is the synthetic type of anti-aging cream. On the screen you can see another example of anti-aging cream which is herbal in nature and it contains herbal extracts along with other excipients for anti-aging cream. The next heading is evaluation of anti-aging products. It includes certain parameters like organoleptic properties, particle size determination, centrifugation, spreadability, etc. Now first is organoleptic evaluation which is based on 
visual observation for color, homogeneity and organoleptic properties. The next parameter is determination of particle size and shape which is determined by photon correlation spectroscopy and the surface morphology is determined by transmission electron microscopy or scanning electron microscopy. The next is centrifugation test which is carried out at 3000 rpm for 30 minutes then it is kept for 24 hours after preparing then at one week interval for a month. The next parameter is spreadability test which is determined using the apparatus that is called spreadability test apparatus and using the formula S is equal to M into L by T where M is the weight tied on the upper slide, L is the length of the glass slide and T is the time in second. By this formula we can determine the spreadability of a formulation. The next parameter is pH. It is very important because it is a topical formulation and the pH of the formulation is determined by using using a digital pH meter. Then the freeze and thaw cycle is carried out by using certain conditions. Freezing conditions are minus 20 degrees Celsius for 48 hours and then thawing conditions are at room temperature for 48 hours. Next parameter is viscosity or the rheological properties. Viscosity is determined by using Brookfield viscometer at 25 degrees Celsius at 100 rpm. Then the next is determination of water number where water number is the maximum quantity quantity of water that is added to 100 gram of formulation base at a particular temperature. The next is diffusion of active ingredient. This gives the amount of cream base which is diffused within the skin and it is carried out using nutrient agar in petri plate. The next is drug content. The drug content in the anti-aging product is carried out or determined by using UV spectrophotometer or other hyphenated technique. In this we can determine the concentration of anti-aging component and calculated its percentage. Then the in vitro drug release studies. As it is a topical formulation, the drug release is carried out using Franz diffusion cell and the drug concentration is determined using UV spectrophotometer. Then the kinetic analysis of a drug release. By getting the data from the in vitro release, we can fit in different kinetic models or kinetic equations to evaluate the mechanism of drug release. Then the next and the last topic for evaluation is stability testing. In this we check the stability of the formulation by keeping at different temperatures like refrigerator temperature that is 8 degrees Celsius, room temperature that is 25 degrees Celsius and the oven temperature that is 40 degrees Celsius and we can determine the changes occur in anti-aging formulation during the one month of duration at different temperatures. There are certain clinical tests which are used for evaluation of anti-aging formulation. In this first is skin irritation test. The formulation is applied on the arms of 10 women. The test sites is observed for any type of skin reactions like itching, erythema or edema for 48 hours after application. The next test is anti-aging activity by VisioPhase. The visio phase, it is a full phase photographic method for facial skin analysis, optimal product recommendation and treatment documentation. It consists of a booth in which the face is placed for a photographic image. Diodes illuminate the face homogeneously without the need for frequent servicing. Images are made then analyzed with a complete skin investigation software. This software is also used to operate the multi skin test center. The overlay feature enables you to make more accurate comparisons for follow up visits. Products and treatments can be included in the software and a product and treatment recommendation printed for the client. The image of VisioFace you can see on the screen that is used for evaluation of effectiveness of the anti-aging preparation and here you can see the difference between the two images in first this presence of wrinkles and in other there is reduction in wrinkles. Now at the end by discussing this topic we got the knowledge about the aging, causes of aging and all the anti-aging preparations. By keeping in mind all these we should avoid exposure of our skin to external factors of aging to prevent premature aging. Thank you.